or something. All right. Here's one coming to us from all the way from France. This review review was brought to you by Matthias. Is it Matthias? Is it Matthias? I hear people say it both. I like Matthias. I don't know. From Paris, France. Super generous donation to the show. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, yeah, Paris. Wow. City of romance. Hmm? The city of don't take shit from red light tickets. This is what I love about the French. You know, they got those red light... They're trying to install these red light ticket cameras all over the fucking place now. You know, where do we live? That's what I want to know. I can't even drive my car. I get the shakes. If I see a cop or I, I see a, a camera on by a red light, I, I get the shakes. This is no way to live. Not only that, you live in New York... Listen, you got you got tenants upstairs, downstairs, trying to cover the fucking taxes on your house. Then the fucking, you, you're working two, three fucking jobs, and then you drive home, and my wife loves it. It's like, this is like another thing. It's like she loves. It's like poking a dog in a cage. I come home from work. She's like, honey, you got an envelope. And I'm like, oh, my God. I already know what it is. I can spot the envelope from a mile away. Open it up. Bang, $100. Gone. Yeah, red light ticket. Yeah. Oh, how nice. What a nice way to come home and unwind. It's like... I feel like I'm living on a cannonball! It just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So, uh, so now uh, every time I stop at a light, I'm thinking to myself, I want to be, I want to be the blue collar. I want to be like Robin Hood. How do every time I see these traffic, these red lights, I'm like, how do I destroy it? How do I destroy it without hurting anybody? That's what I, that's what I always think to myself, right? I'm like, what do I got to do? Get on a building with a gun and snipe one of these? And I say, you can't do that, right? You can't have stray bullets flying around. I'm like, what do I sneak out at night and spray paint it? I'm like, oh yeah, brilliant. I'll go out and I'll try to spray paint a camera. <laughs> you stupid dope. <laughs> then I'm like long range. Maybe maybe I'll hit it with a uh, with with a with a slingshot. And then I'm like, what am I gonna? I'm sitting there with a slingshot. Like you get, you're never gonna hit the fucking thing. And then. Then there's like cameras all over the buildings that are around. You get caught again. So my final idea, and this is where I gave up. You know. Imagine that. Listen, if I knew there was a guy out there destroying red light cameras, I'd slip him a, a hundred bucks. I, I, here you go, buddy. F keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> I swear to God. So I came up with this idea, like... Late at night, you wait for like a tractor trailer to pull up at the red light, right? Then you run up and you just hook a chain. Just tie it, hook a chain, like around the bumper of the truck. And then you run over and you hook the uh, the, ch the chain around the red light uh, camera pole. And then you walk away. And then as, as the truck drive was, drives away, he rips the thing out of the fucking ground. <laughs> I don't know. You can't do that either. What if somebody's walking by, he rips the pole out of the ground and hits somebody over the head? You can't do these types of things, all right? You just can't. What did the French do? I love it. Where the light pole is, where they have the camera on the pole, there's a there's like a, a transformer box or like the control box underneath it. They go and they fill the box with spray foam. Oh, it's a great idea. Then when the operators, by the way, private operators, yeah, these cameras aren't owned by the state. There's some, there's some Yahoo jackass who, who owns all these cameras, so he's making a great profit on it. He goes to New York State, hey, I'll install the cameras, free of charge to you. You give us like uh, 25%. You guys get 75%. Oh yeah, it's a nice little business, isn't it though? Right. And then you got a guy coming home from work who goes into a fucking rage and starts beating his wife and kids. <laughs> it's wonderful. This is great. This is great. Yeah. And I can't move out of New York State. 
Thank you, honey! Anyway, let's get to the game, huh? I just freshen up this coffee, huh? Sip of coffee for spray foam. Spray foam in the control box. Okay, here we go. Matthias gave us a couple of options. One of the options was a Sega Saturn shooter. I said, here we go. I can kill two birds with one stone. I can do this review, and I can get you fucking Sega Saturn guys off my back already. Jesus Christ, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. One of these days I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to have one of you Sega Saturn fans over my my head with a, with a knife in your hand or something. Christ almighty, here we go. So here it is. It's Metal Black. What a name, number one. Metal Black. Excuse me. So Metal Black, what do we have here? Tato Game. Tato Game, 1996. Look at that cover art, number one. The cover art is... The, the ship is great... It was like they did such a great job on the ship, and then the artist kind of got lazy at the end. He's like, oh. he's like, I'll draw, I'll draw this thing in the background, and then I'll go to IHOP and get a bottomless cup of coffee and pancakes. All right. There we go. Metal Black. So we turn on Metal Black, and they tell you this story. Number one, I like the story, and I don't like the story. Some type of, like, asteroids came back down from... Uh, from like some moon of Jupiter and started pummeling the earth. That's fine. But in the storyline, it says at the same time, there's an, Italian, there's an alien attack. At the same time. Like they're two different events. I don't know. What is that? Bad luck? These aliens calm down. But they don't really destroy earth. We reach like a peaceful... We reach, we reach peace with these aliens, right? And then we, and then the Earth start is dying. It's such a weird story. And then all of a sudden, what happens is these aliens introduce a, a molecule, and this is very important a mechanic in the game. They introduce a molecule, some type of molecule in our atmosphere called the New Alone mo molecule. And what happens is this new alone like floats in the air and as you drive your ship you can collect it and you as you collect it your weapon gets stronger and stronger but wait a second why do you have a ship that can use this new alone because we de we developed a ship that can use it it was called the black fly uh what was it called the the the, the gun for Project uh, Project Gun Frontier? Yes, yes. Anyhow, we developed a ship that can use these this new molecule, but then we shit canned the project. We packed it away. We didn't want to use it. I don't know why. And a rogue pilot went and stole the Black Fly and decides that I guess he believes that these aliens are killing the human race. So he decides to grab the ship, and it's on, baby. So the ship can grab these these molecules, which are, which are very interesting. They fly around the screen. They clump together. They're always there in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes, sometimes there's less of it. Sometimes there's more of it. And you grab this molecule, which powers up your ship and ultimately powers up a meter on the bottom of the screen that gives you this enormous energy blast. <laughs> And now the first time I saw the super weapon go off, I was like, wait a second. That looks just like Darius. Darius Gaiden. If you've ever seen the explosion from Darius Gaiden, it's one of the best. Listen, super bombs in games, okay? I love them. But Darius, Ga Darius Gaiden doesn't get enough credit, and it's super affordable for the, for the Sega Saturn. It has one of the most incredible super bombs you're ever going to let off. It's lightning, blue lightning striking all over the place. It creates this black hole that opens up. 
It's like, <laughs> it's so fucking intense, man. Oh, man. Listen, Darius Gaiden, that's fun stuff. Anyhow, in Metal Black, you let loose the super weapon, and it's like all of a sudden this you get this uh, like lightning strike all over the screen, and if you press the, the super bomb button again, there's a, basically a shoot button, su uh, super bomb or beam button. You press it again, it takes that lightning and it focuses it into this like real powerful beam. The beam is super impressive. Oh yeah, it's a nice big fat thick beam. And then funny thing is, as you burn through, you, you'll see the meter at the bottom, you're burning through the, the, the new atone, the new alone. Your beam gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But as you're shooting the beam, you can go around collecting more molecules and keep the beam going. Yes. <laughs> That's a great, great mechanic. Okay, before we get back to the mechanic though. So it starts, we start out on the first level and... What struck me was we're coming we're coming through these buildings and it's like three heavy duty scrolling uh uh like scrolling levels of buildings that you go through very nice beautiful 3D effect and I and all I could think to myself is my god we're playing Sega Saturn now let's face it you know listen 16 bit shooters I love them to death but we know the limitations so it's like Put a shooter in front of me. I'm going to tell you. Listen, I'm going to let you know. 30, 16 bit or 32 bit. We're, with, we're playing with 32 bits of power now. Yeah. And then it comes out to these beautifully parallax scrolling clouds with a sun in the middle. Okay. And very hazy. And you're above the, your ship is above the clouds. It's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> The beginning is gorgeous, and the music starts out amazing. As we move on... Oh, by the way, the first enemies that you shoot down, this is, this is what started to scare me. I'm like, oh my god, this is great. Oh, by the way, when you shoot, if you hold the button down, I've never experienced this in a shooter before. If you hold the button down... Uh, you'll shoot a rapid shot that gradually dies down. So you'll you'll press the button and be like, it's like the shot dies down. So you got to cycle. You don't have to rapid press the button, but you have to cycle the button. I found like this type of rhythm, that 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 to do a fast shot, which 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 almost seems like it would be annoying, but it's not. It's not. It works. I like it. Didn't bother me at all. Anyhow. So what scared me was the first enemies that come out are some what look like jet fighters. And when you shoot them, very, very cheap looking explosion. It's like we had these beautiful pixelated uh, graphics. And then I shot the first enemies and... It was like these very cheap looking explosions. I don't know how to say it. It just looked so cheap. And I was like, uh-oh. That was like the uh, the old mailbox flag went up in my head. That said, oh, I don't, I didn't like that. It reminded me of, what was it? Trevor, Trevor, Mc, Trevor McDuff? In the Crescent Moon for the Jaguar? Remember this, the, the ship explosions? That game reeked. Like so many Jaguar games, it reeked of cheapness. Just like, I don't know what it was about that game. It just felt so cheap. Oh. 
It's like the fucking toy I bought my son last night. I bought him that gun that you put the you put the uh, the dots in and it has a suction cup at the end. It's a plastic gun. I bought it at the dollar store for two dollars. I said this is great. I said I want to play with it. You shoot, you shoot the dots at the sliding glass door. They stick. I bought him the gun. It came with five dots. Do you know what the gun broke off the after the third dot? I swear to Christ, that's the cheap piece of shit. I had to take it apart. It's like glued together. I'm cracking it. I had to tape it back together. It might have got 10 more shots after that. And then broke again. Anyhow. Those two, those explosions from those jet fighters reeked of cheapness. But then, uh, after that, it didn't happen. It didn't happen again until li- later on in the, in the game. From those particular enemies. So it was weird. It was almost like those enemies had their own type of explosions. Here we go. Uh, Impressions. Nice impressions are this beautiful dirt effect. There's a part in the game where there's fucking... There's like an aircraft carrier sticking out of the ground. This is how you know the earth got fucked up. When there's an an aircraft carrier sticking out of the ground sideways. And then all of a sudden this, this dirt effect happens beautiful dirt effect and the sound that arcade sound (laughs) as this this beautiful pixelated dirt effect happens and then the fucking aircraft carrier comes out of the ground and it's on the back of like this big like I don't know what it is. It looks like a, like between a scorpion and a crab and a, and a fucking spider. And the, then the music, at that moment, this aircraft carrier comes out of the ground. You're like, oh my god, this is like the most badass thing of all time. And then the music changes. Pet peeve number two about this game. The music... Oh, when that aircraft carrier comes out, then the music changes to like. Did you ever see the scene in Carrie, where Carrie's dancing with that? He looks like Robert. I love it. I love it how Carrie's boyfriend looked just like Robert Plant. You know, and they're dancing on the dance floor and they're playing that that corny music. It changes into Carrie music. This thing. This monster just hoisted an aircraft carrier out of the ground. I want to hear a dive bomb on a Fender guitar. And it starts going into this cheesy music. like what the fuck that pissed me off okay so uh, here we go moving on still still on the first level get to the first boss and the first boss appears and I'm like oh my god Darius again. This is a Darius boss. He comes out, he's like this crustacean. I don't know what it is. Like some type of crustacean. (laughs) He's got like a shell and all that. And the shell comes up and he's got these legs underneath. Almost like a crab. And it just kept on flashing into my mind. This is is Darius. What's going on here? So anyway, you fight the the bosses are very impressive. They're huge, big screen bosses. I mean, the other thing that that cried out Darius is every time you fight a boss, the backgrounds turn into these undulating, you know, like uh, processor pushing type of of undulating backgrounds. Right? You could hear you could hear the processes RPM start to rise. 
And that's that's another Darius type of thing going on there. These undulating boss backgrounds, so like bright colors, like you know, and and whatnot. And super and this is Saturn, man. This is Saturn all the way. It's just like displaying, flexing its its shooter muscles. So here we go. Interesting thing happens. I notice as I'm fighting this boss, he has like a little like a uh, almost like what looks like a, a snake head comes out and it starts eating the new alone particles in the air. So I'm like, what's going on here? He's eating the new alone particles. Next thing you know, he's able to also harness that new alone into a blast. And what I did by accident, very first time I fought him, I unleashed my new alone cannon, Mega Beam. He unleashed his mega beam, and all of a sudden, our beams like converged with each other and caused this like huge explosive ball of fire. It's like Dragon Ball Z, you know? Both beams hit, it creates this ball, and whoever, and then it turns into a button mash. Almost like uh, WrestleFest. Was it WrestleFest in the arcade where you're going back and forth like this and you gotta. You gotta mash the buttons, and you gotta mash the buttons. Now, whoever has more, a higher meter, well, you know, you can't see the, the, the boss's meter, but you can, you can tell by the size of his blast, has a big advantage on where the ball's gonna go. But from what I understand, you can tap the button and push the ball toward the enemy, and then ultimately, the ball will go in, in either direction and cause a great, a great deal of damage. Of course, for you, it's a one hit death so that's a great deal of damage but the ball can swing the other way and and hit the enemy which is great it was great <laughs> like what the fuck it was it was the best to experience that without knowing it yeah, because it was like, whoa, I was like, what's going on here? It's like the world is coming to an end right before my eyes, this big ball of energy. Woo! And then, and then you kill, you kill a boss, and you get, again, Darius. You get this wicked explosion, what I call the world map explosion. Because as you blast them, this like... This, it looks like the world map is scrolling by. And of course he screeches like and his legs are going up and down. And then boom, you know, it's it's so Darius when it comes to that. I mean, it's like Darius Gaiden. I don't know how to say it. So what happens? Then we go to a bonus stage that, quite frankly, it re reminds me of like a Super Nintendo uh, Super Scope 6 game. Honestly. But it's night. I, I like it that it breaks up the monotony. You have a bonus stage at the end of level 1 and at the end of level 4. And I don't mind it. If it was at the end of every level, it would be annoying because basically what it is is you're moving a gun sight onto one of these enemies and you get, you get, you're trying to achieve a lock-on and then you have to lock on to so many in a certain amount of time. But it's a cool effect. I like how the rockets... You fire these missiles and they lock on and they're chasing down the enemy. And when they explode, you know, it's great explosions. It's great sound. It's great scaling effects, you know. If this was back in, in 96, you would have been blown away by the scaling effects. This would have been more interesting, I guess, than it was it is today. Yeah. But it remi reminded me of, of, like, Interceptor for the Super Scope 6. Oh, what was the other game? I don't know. just had that feel to it. 
Great. Then, as you leave level one, this is what's great. I love this. You're on planet, you're on this dystopian planet Earth, right? The Earth is fucked. So you're basically like, I'm out of here. You have a booster. What I love about level one is you're carrying around a booster rocket underneath you. And then next thing, you come out of the Earth's atmosphere, you burn your booster rocket, and then it drops off. Very nice effect. And then it's gone. So your sprite changes from level one to level two. Next thing you know, you're in outer space. What, what's the second level? I think it's called the cry, cry of the moon or something like that. At a space level, very nice rockets flying around, bing, bang, boom. Uh, the end boss on level two. Is almost like a mock moon. It was like, is this the moon that we were looking at? Because you see the moon in the background. But then there's another moon. But it's, it looks like the moon. But the moon in the background is much bigger. So you're thinking to yourself, maybe from Earth, this was a smaller moon that was blocking our perspective of the moon. Like they were hiding out a ship in outer space. Which is a cool concept. But I'm like, did I just come up with that in my head? Or is this how it's actually happening? I like to think that's what it was. We had this fake moon up there. Blocking our moon. And then next thing you know, the moon... You come up to... The, the moon's always in the background. Scrolls with you. And at the end, it scales up. And the moon cracks open like an egg. And out shoots boss number two. Boss number two, very cool. He has like these... Uh, sp these turrets on his tail. They're like spinning cannons. Very nice. I liked I liked level two. You go out in space. But here's the problem. We go to level three and it's like Dreamland. Okay, so we're on we're on like a We're going through a process here, right? We left Earth. I like that. We were on Earth, we left Earth, we're in space. Okay. Now boom, level three, we're in Dreamland. And I said, okay. Maybe the pilot's so exhausted, he fell asleep. And here we are in Dreamland. So here we go. If you're gonna, here's a, here's a pet peeve that I have. If you're gonna name a level Dreamland, it better be Dreamland! And it starts off, okay. We come out of this, like, what looks like a big terraformed colony. You know, like, you know, like how you always see, like, uh, science fiction writers draw, like, terraforming if it was on another planet. And sometimes it's like this huge cylinder that would be spinning around creating gravity, right? Like a, like a centrifugal gravity. And you see, like, the buildings are all on the outside of the cylinder. I love this kind of thing. Fly me there. I want to be there. You see fields and trees and everything like that. And this thing's just rotating. So you're, you're flying out of... You start the level flying out of there. and But it's all busted up. So like that thing got destroyed too. So... And you fly into level 3. And here we go. It's the level 3. We'll talk about the best music of the game. Yeah, Dreamland, the best music of the game. But you're flying through, and this isn't much of a Dreamland. It's probably it it feels more like outer space to me. You're flying through a little base there. All right. So Dreamland was uh, I don't know. It was kind of like uh, disappointing to me. Okay. But what I did notice, and I noticed this from the beginning of the game, your new alone meter at the bottom of the screen 
it fills up, but it doesn't go all the way to max. You see? It comes up, say, say there's five units. There's a sixth unit on there. So right away when I saw that, I said, oh my God. I said, in the later stages, we're going to get extra capacity on that meter. And I said, I love the idea of that. Because it makes me want to fight. Why can't anybody listen to me? It makes you want to fight till the end of the game. Because if I can fill that meter up some more, and this blast, this fucking incredible blast gets even bigger... I'm in! I'm in! So here we go. Then we go to... Uh, uh, the fourth stage? Now the fourth stage, this really pisses me off. <laughs> I want to tell you something right now. I like this game, but it fucking pisses me off. They missed the mark on a few things. And this stage... Okay, so we went to Dreamland. All right? I can buy your Dreamland, even though there was nothing dreamy about it. So I'll, I'll, I'll go along for this ride. But then we get to stage this stage four. And it's like, the stage is called... You ready for this? Crystal Lies. Crystal... Then L-I-Z-E. Lies. Now, what's a lies? Well, were we trying to do something? That pissed me off. I'm like, now you guys are just fucking with me. Now you go to this board that is like... For the time, I understand. It's almost like photo real. Like crystal outcroppings. Mm-hmm. Okay. For 1996, I'm putting myself back in that time. Very impressive. Okay, it almost looks like coral reef, but almost like photorealistic. Excuse me. Okay, I'm into it, but the board is very repetitive and very cheap looking. All right, there are only a handful of enemies on this level. You're starting to bring back enemies from past levels. Now you're pissing me off. Because I put in all this work to get here, Jack... And you're going to start recycling enemies on me? Uh-uh! That doesn't fly. It kind of redeems itself at the end by you have the big battleship battle. And I dig I dig the, bo the end boss on this. The, the, number one, the, the background goes f fucking bananas. It's like this blue, it almost looks like reptile skin moving around. A lot of morphing and, and, and twisting and interesting background okay and then you have this this ship a big ship which is basically you you, you fly to the front of it and you blow the, the the front valance off and it's like this brain inside I'm like all right all right I'm picking up on this and then they start playing this music that kind of sounds like Terminator in the police station <laughs> said okay you're reeling me back in and then this enemy shoots out a double blast of the the new alone particle cannon and i'm like okay okay and then you fly under the ship and these like screws start to come out of it nice effect almost like more the thing that disappointed me is more of those valances didn't come off to expose organic material underneath that would have been nice but ultimately uh that Horrific level is brought back a little by the Amboss. A little bit. A little bit. Okay. So here's where the storyline of the game... Uh, ...starts to pull itself back together. Okay. We fly to Nemesis, which is apparently uh, the lair of the this group of aliens so okay we're back into some semblance of order here uh we were in uh 
Dreamland. When we went to this crystal area. I don't know where this is. But now we're at the enemy. Fine. Okay, we're back in. This is where the difficulty really ramps up. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I had a harder time beating Metal Black than... Uh, than I did with uh, Nexer. Woo! Because you have a, a, a finite amount of continues. I played it on normal, okay? I'm not playing it on hard. I know a lot of you shooter guys, what? I only play it on very hard. Yeah, well, that's really nice for you. But uh, I didn't go to easy. I could have done that. I just stuck with normal. All right? I wanted a general feel of what the game's supposed to play. So, you know, listen. I could have took the easy way out. I didn't, though. You're welcome. By the way. So this one chewed me out. Uh, yeah, it was tough. Because you, I set the credits to four credits instead of three. Ooh, that was the big option, right? You go in the options, it was like, it was like, oh, I can change my lives from three to four. Wow. Thank you. And then I think it's either four or five continues. And then after that, you're out. So, here we go. We're in Nemesis. Here, it's a nice alien... Uh, it's where the aliens should live. Let's put it that way. They, they, hit, they hit the mark with the background. It's very, it's very organic looking, almost like, you know, when you play Contra, last level of Contra, right? This, the, the ground, the ceiling, and the floor is alive. You get this idea, right? You're in a being now. There's like, this is very alien. Uh... Difficulty ramps up, but they're recycling enemies, man. Come on! There's too much of this going on towards the end of this game. They are recycling too many enemies, and it, it, it bothers the shit out of me. It bothers the living shit out of me. Yeah. Uh, then... As we get to... I got some notes here, all right? Like, you see me drifting off to the side here. I got some notes, all right? What do I look like? A fucking computer? Jesus Christ almighty. Just this, the stuff that I don't want to miss. I got to refresh myself once in a while. A quick glance, all right? I'll, I'm not reading a teleprompter here. Then when you get to the end of this level... Uh, very cool thing. You're fighting with the backdrop is Jupiter. I don't care what you say. I'm no astronomer. I could pick up that it's Jupiter. What is what is it with Jupiter? What is it like a storm? You see that like that that dot on Jupiter? Apparently, it's like a hurricane that's been going on for the last billion years. <laughs> Imagine being on the surface. I, is there even a surface to Jupiter? There's not. It's like a gas planet. If it's made out of gas, it's not a planet. It doesn't qualify. And there's a hurricane going on. I mean, imagine being out in this hurricane. <laughs> you can't imagine, right? You imagine standing there. Whoa. <laughs> it's wild shit, man. Wow. Intergalactic hurricane going on here. Anyhow, you see Jupiter in the background. And all of a sudden, all these, like, I don't know, space debris. It's not space debris. It's it, like asteroids are flying by, scrolling, right? Parallax scrolling is happening here. And then you get into this boss fight. And the boss, he kind of looks like the boss from level one. I was like, oh, dude, come on. But this is where I give it a pass. I said, okay, he looks different, like different. Maybe this is, a, this is the species. All right? So I gave, I'm giving this game the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe this is the... A different species of the original boss, right? You get a pass. He's a little bit different. The fight is a lot harder. Okay? But here we go. It's very nice to see uh, all the scrolling particles in the background while you're fighting a boss. It's very, it's very high-powered. It's very 32-bit. Oh, yeah. Which brings us to the last level, which is level six. Six levels in this game. <sighs> By the way, six levels in, and I noticed that 
my uh, my new alone meter hasn't increased yet. And I'm like, huh, if, the, if this is going to happen, it better happen soon. Because this is what I've been waiting for the whole game. This is a big reason why I, I went through the game. I'm like, I got to see this meter go up. I, I, I got to report to everybody what happens when this meter goes up. Uh, you get to this level, and... I'm sorry, I'm dr I drifted a little bit. You get to this level, oh, there's, there's a big star burst in the background, all right? So you're thinking to yourself, okay, we're at the heart of things here. And... <sighs> Jesus Christ. Brain freeze. I think what we need to talk about on this level is again a lot of a lot of recycled enemies. I'm, this is the last level. There's no excuse for this anymore. We're in a very special place. Okay? I get it. You guys are developing these aliens, you're creating these aliens. They're all of the same race, okay? So I guess you can you can might have a pass for seeing repeat enemies. I, I it, listen, I you need to dazzle me by the last level. I'm on the last level. You need to dazzle me. Anyway. We get to the last level a little underwhelming because there's not much scrolling. There's just this big star burst in the background, which it, which is okay. So here we go. Last boss. Right. Okay, this guy. He looks like the last boss. Very uh, translucent, almost like, almost has a uh, an air of delicacy about him, where everybody was very hard shelled, and you know, crab or crustacean like or armored. It almost seems like this guy has a bit of vulnerability. You're like, oh, I got him when you see him. You're like, this guy is just like, you know, he's soft tissue. <laughs> Almost like a jellyfish, right? So here we go. The background transforms into very kind of like trippy background. And as you fight this enemy, it's like his anus prolapses and comes out and starts spitting out uh, new alone particles. And you start to realize this is the guy creating all the trouble. This is the guy creating these molecules all over the place. And as you fight them, the backgrounds begin to change. You see, like, fossils. And I'm like, huh, look at that, fossils. And you shoot them, you shoot them, you shoot them. Next thing you know, he has a pretty basic pattern, which is nice. It didn't, it wasn't, the last boss didn't really, you know, uh, give, me a, give you a run for your money. I could almost relax a little bit and notice what was going on. I think that was the master plan here, right? Yeah. So you collect these these uh, these new alone particles as he drops them. You're building up your cannon. You're blasting them with the cannon. The background changes again. Next thing you know, it's like uh, a monkey. You say what a, a monkey with an axe in the background, almost like a portrait. And then the music changes back to the carry music. As soon as the monkey pops up, the music goes back to that carry music. And I was like, oh, fuck, come on. very disappointed with that and then you fight the boss some more and then you see a guy in the background with like an RPG and I'm like what are they trying to show like an evolution of man here it goes from fossil to to chimpanzee with an axe to guy with like an uh, surface to air missile or something like that on his shoulder and then as you fight some more you see like dolls like like a china doll and like some wreckage. And you're like, what is that? The end of the earth there? And then it's like, oh my God, this boss, what is this boss trying to use? Some like psychological type of, uh, what is he? He's giving me the, uh, 
Doctor. Uh, oh fuck. Xavier was he giving me the old Doctor Xavier here? And then and then all of a sudden it goes from like wreckage with a doll in the wreckage to a pussy cat. And I was like, "Ha! Hey, what? What? What's going on here?" To a pussy cat. And then here's the thing. Oh, by the way, my meter that I've been like waiting for that meter to stretch the extra, you know, unit, it never happens. Hugely disappointing. Hugely disappointing. Okay, so you beat this guy, and then what happens? And like the most grand thing ever happens. The earth splits in half. You're like, what? What? This guy dies, the earth splits in half. And you're like, what the fuck? That, that's pretty awesome. And, then, and then, then it has the audacity to tell you, was this real or was this just a dream? And it shows you like the, the ocean. And then, and then it says, we don't know yet. And I was like, we don't know yet. I was like, motherfucker, I just beat this game. We better start knowing. So it just leaves you like, I don't, completely hanging. And then credit roll. So what do I want to tell you about Metal Black? Graphically, very impressive game. If you like Darius games, you should own this game. Because it is, it's a pseudo Darius game. Oh yeah. What what saves this game, I'm going to tell you right now, is that new alone particle cannon. I love it. I love the weapon mechanic. It's awesome. I love shooting that beam. Uh, low level beam, high level beam, collecting those, those uh, molecules. Very, very fun. Very, very fun. Uh... Difficulty on this game, I could see how people probably say this game is, isn't that difficult. I had a little trouble with it. I had to duke it out. But uh, graphically, very impressive. Uh, musically, I give it a C. I give it a C. That's a big problem. Music, some more, some some better music, kick-ass music for this game. Don't don't anybody try to tell me the music's good in this game. It's not. It has moments, but it's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so there you have it Matthias thanks again buddy that one's for you that one's for you go to like uh, go to go have a cup of coffee at one of those coffee shops like what in Paris you wake up extra early right in Paris I don't know maybe you were out fucking all night because what else do you do in Paris <laughs> go to one of those coffee shops in the morning have a croissant have a cup of coffee, and then have a cigarette. All right, you just tuned in to the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face!